Hey folks, Justin here, and welcome to Meta Mondays. Today we're playing Rage Warrior because it's good and it runs Squish the Wimpy and people keep talking about purple control, purple aggro, you know, and uh, it makes sense. You see a lot of purple stuff on the ladder these days and uh, you, frankly you see a lot of Rage Warrior too. So this list um, is... Uh, was created by Aini. He played it to rank one legend. If you're not familiar with Aini, one of the games historically just with best players. Um, Thulder then played it in Warp Meta 49 uh, with a one card change, which we have incorporated here. Um, I decided about halfway through recording this video that I was going to not use my own version of Rage Warrior. Uh, now, Rage Warrior, unlike most of the Meta Monday types of decks, is actually a deck that I've played a ton of. And uh, a deck I actually, I mean, if you go back on the channel, I have a video playing a Rage Warrior deck that has as many cards in common with this as you could have back then, uh, a year and a half ago, um, where I played in an, one of those epic gauntlet things, um, to seven wins or whatever it was. But anyway, um, my current version was like five cards off of this version, uh, but upon reflection, like, I really thought about it, and like, Meta Mondays isn't about me sharing my deck lists. Uh, that's what the rest of the week is there for, um, me doing my thing. Meta Mondays is where we take the stuff that the people who are playing at rank one legend are doing. So I, I have included um, a, a, a game or two of mine, um, but for the most part it's going to be this version, which I do think is more consistent than mine. So uh, this is going to be Meta Mondays. I hope you enjoy it. This is a very powerful deck. Um, you know, Squish the Wimpy, remarkably strong card. Uh, Gatekeeper, another new addition, alongside a Dark Seducer, which I'm super keen on because it just wins games sometimes. Wins games, and you could play a whole bunch of one of like just giant creatures. It's a lot of fun, you know. For a, for a, for a Meta Monday deck, this is this is as close to my heart as we're gonna get. So, I hope you enjoy. Hey folks, Justin here, and welcome to another Meta Mondays. And today we're playing Rage Warrior. Uh, you know, whether the truth is, is that. Rage Warrior is a fantastically strong deck. It's the rare deck that I really enjoy playing and is also really good. So you have seen this deck on the channel before, but uh, it's, it seems appropriate. So we're going to see how it does today on the ladder. Um, Squish the Wimpy has done beautiful things for this deck. Uh, I kind of want to keep Dushnik Yal Archer. Um, my thought is, I don't think it's Control Mage. If it is Control Mage, we just win. If it's uh, Token Mage or Dwemer Mage, having the support removal could be really huge. So I'm going to go ahead and keep it. Now I say we just win. I mean, like, I say that and then we lose, and that's going to be great. But yeah, it looks like it's an aggressive deck. So, And directly into the Shadow Lane. Um, yeah. I guess I oppose that. We run a single copy of Skaven. Uh, you know, the deck does a good job of churning through its stuff, and then with the... So, with the one Skaven, uh, I feel like I can bring that back if I need to. Um, yeah. I'm excited to see how we do today for Meta Mondays. This is a deck that... Uh, an archetype, actually, that I played well over a year ago in one of those epic gauntlet things. Um, there's a video, an hour-long video on the channel where I do that. But the... Uh, interesting... I don't want to rally onto that. But the truth is, is that it's the addition of cards like Sword of the Inferno and Squish the Wimpy uh, that weren't cards when I first started playing the deck that have brought it to the place where it's at now. And it's it's got it's such a strong deck with such an incredibly powerful late game that it sort of polarizes things in a, in a really interesting way. Um, the punish here now is going to be... Do I think this is going to get executed? I'm going to go ahead and play this. This is an interesting game. By the way, I love when a mage player plays nothing in the, in the field lane against a control warrior. But, um... Our late game is just so insane, right? Now, there is the problem where, with this deck, like with a lot of ramp decks in general, where you can just draw the wrong half. Mace of Encumbrance, huh? Well... 
I think I feel okay about sort of the inferno in this. And I will go ahead and just lay this down. My plan then being to get back in the field lane where I assume they're going next since they seem to not be super into interacting with me. Sure. Sure. Okay. You know what? I like, I actually really like Gatekeeper Tree Minder here. Continue my ramp game. Just clog up the whole board with guards. I think I might have been in the middle of some thought when I had to actually focus on playing, so I apologize if <laughs> I was saying something and I don't know what it was. But yeah, Meta Mondays is fun. It is nice every once in a while to break out the really strong decks, and this is definitely one of them right now. Um, this is my take on it. Um, frequently for Meta Mondays, what I do is uh, get lists from other people, but uh, I feel like of all the archetypes I've played in this series before, this is the one I'm most familiar with. So, And most of these decks are pretty similar. Okay. Well, it might be time to Dushnik ping that. Or play Dark Seducer. Dark Seducer could just win me the game. My other play is Indril Dushnik. Yeah, I'm, I'm down with Dark Seducer. Uh, I assume I'm not gaining 21 life, uh, you know, with a firebolt and then swinging three creatures into this, but, uh, you know, it could happen. <laughs> now, Dark Seducer is not in all these lists. I run one of, just like I run one of all of the uh, big endgame creatures in this deck. One Iron Atronach, one of each of the nine Magicka Endurance um, creatures. Uh, the Blood Magic and Night Talon Lords. Uh, one of these, um, and one pure blood elder, and uh, I, I do that to avoid losing to uh, cast into time, and because frankly it's more fun that way. But I think it actually is correct as well. Sure. Okay, so I'm gonna gain seven. And uh, now we got a lot of options. A little rapid shot action. Well, I can Necromancer back some ramp. I think first I'm an Indoral Mastermind. Hmm. I think it's Defiler here. A rapid shot this. Venom Tongue. So now we're just looking for ways to keep moving. Um, I think it's Tree Minder since I have the Venom Tongue in hand. Yeah, now we're just looking for crossbows, squish the wimpies, and uh, sword in the infernos. Galen's a great card and one that oftentimes I'm really excited to have, but I don't think we need it right now. East March Crusader is really good for our opponent. You know, we're an Unstoppable Rage deck too, right? So, like, at some point, we're probably just going to Unstoppable Rage them. And, you know, we want to get to 18 Magicka for the combo kill Unstoppable Rage with Pure Blood Elder. Legion Shield. That's pretty cool. Little Wardcrafter action. Oh, well, there's Pure Blood Elder. I don't think, actually, my opponent has any removal. But I also only have one of these, so just playing it isn't necessarily a great idea. Uh, I can just Dushnik this. We must protect our because if I play this now, I'm never unstoppable raging on it. But I would continue to gain Magicka. But then again, like, how much more Magicka do I need? 
I want to bring back Dark Seducer. Yeah. I think, like, the longer this game goes, the greater chance we have of just winning. And I did just remove, get rid of my support removal, which could be a thing. But I got the Defiler in hand, and uh, could always reanimate it later. Another East March. Cloud Rest. Brutal Asslander, huh? There's Sword of the Inferno. Okay, so now we're going to just bring back Dark Seducer, right? It's not like the greatest play we can make. But I think it just ends the game. And start poking our opponent a little bit too. You know, they could swing here, kill this with a lucky uh, Ashlander. Alright, there we go. End of the game. We'll be right back for more Meta Monday. Alright, we're back for a second game with Rage Warrior. Um, for Meta Mondays. Let's, let's rock and roll and see how we can do today. Uh, I am hoping that we run into, you know, Tribunal, Sorcerer, the, uh, the usual suspects. Uh, so we get a feel for what this deck does against other decks that are this popular. Although I think this is less popular than those two at the moment. Um, it's a really strong deck. So uh, That said, we are playing against uh, Redoran with uh, Gemax Day. Cool. Let's rock and roll. I will keep a Venom Tongue and a Barrow Stalker. We got an Activator. Greetings, yes. Malakath, guide your arm. Alright. Got a little merchant's camel action. Green packed ambusher, huh? So, what does that mean? It could be Rage, Slay, uh, Redoran. Could be Conscription. Okay, double prophecy guard opener. Let's go ahead and play our mastermind. Um, I'll keep the tree minder. Gatekeeper's a strong card, but could reanimate it later on. Face, no play. All right, well, let's play Merchant's Camel. Here I will take the Necromancer. So predictable. So a couple of our big bodies in the discard pile already. Knight Talon Lord, Gatekeeper, as well as one of our activators. There's Divine Fervor. There's our first rage. Let's go ahead and ramp. So I suspect we're playing against conscription um conscription veteran. <clears throat> Triumphant Yarl. Hmm. Well, that I did not expect. So let's even up the life totals. Continue our ramp game. Now, in an emergency, we have access to Unstoppable Rage on Aldvalot the Assassin. We're about to see a moose, too. Just draw all the cards, veteran. Oh, I thought I heard something. So I would like to ramp hard enough that I can... That's a great draw. Sorry. Okay. So I can Unstoppable Rage and kill my opponent. Uh, when they conscription, but I really think that uh, I think we're good here. Snail this. 
more ramp. Now, if we get unstoppable rage tier, like we get unstoppable rage tier, but I don't suspect that's what's about to happen. I kind of want to kill my camel so that I can bring it back. Sure. Okay. Another Yarl? <laughs> Fair enough. Valkyrie Defiler is kind of huge. I'm going to bring back a mastermind. Just keep digging. I will take the unstoppable rage. Could be that I unstoppable rage on a full Crete defiler pretty soon. To facilitate that, I'm going to play this. They swing in. <clears throat> and that gives me three bodies to turn into bigger bodies. Probably a Necromancer, a Knight Talon Lord, and a Gatekeeper. Okay. Ebonheart Oracle. Cool. All right, so we need to turn these rages into other cards. Start with that. All right. Night Town Lord shows up over here. I'm going to bring back an Odinara Necromancer. And uh, a Tree Minder. Then I'm going to bring back the Gatekeeper. And then this is bringing back another Endworld Mastermind. And I'll take Squish the Wimpy. And you know what else I'm going to do? <laughs> I'm going to grab that Evan Hard Oracle. Alright, we're at 35. We have a fantastic board, and our hand is two unstoppable rages. Your move. <laughs> Immolating Blast. There's Cast in the Time, another Divine Fervor. Uh, let's just go face and gain 10 million life. This isn't necessarily how I should be playing this game at this point, but I I can't imagine how we lose. I mean, it would be an involved emulating blast. I do like that Ebonheart Oracle. <laughs> we too are a redder in deck now, my friend. My brother! Welcome. <laughs> They're setting up for a conscription that won't happen. Uh, yeah, Vivek. So, I don't have a way in hand to kill Vivek. Not a card I expected to see, to be honest. And Galen. Alright, well, let's uh, draw something that can deal with this. Alternatively, what? I mean, we actually have no, no way to even draw a card. <laughs> Alright, Camel's good. They hit a prophecy. Bo 
bone walker. Huh? So if I unstoppable rage on this, I'll bring all this back. Gain about a billion life. I didn't want that. I didn't want that. I want I want the guy that draws me cards. God damn it. We're at 147. And then unstoppable rage again. <laughs> I know this is meta Mondays, but this this is the kind of deck I love playing. <laughs> Howdy folks, Justin here, and welcome back to Meta Mondays with Rage Warrior. Um, I I had a change of heart. Uh, I didn't think ultimately I should include uh, my own deck list for Meta Mondays because it felt like the spirit of the programming was um, highlighting works of other players. So this is a deck, uh, the, uh, the version of this archetype by Aini and Thuldir. Aini made the original list, Thuldir made one card change to it. Uh, and it's like four or five cards different from the deck the version that I was playing but there there are they are substantial changes and uh, relevant ones I think so I wanted to make that change I will include some of the footage I think from my own version of the deck but uh, the list I'm going to be providing and the remainder of the games are going to be played with this one um, but so here we go we're playing against Raydog 2000 on Rhetoran <clears throat> Night Shadow one of the differences now, notably, there are only two unstoppable rages in this version, um, which is kind of cool, kind of interesting. I'm going to go ahead and lead on Alvoth the Assassin, you know, potentially raging onto my Night Shadow. Could make for a better unstoppable rage at some point. I smell the a little Barrow Stalker action. Uh, there's a Falkreath Defiler. Um, Should have been more Should have been more yep, worried. let's trade into this. And we did rage onto our Night Shadow. <clears throat> so the, the the fact that that's their first play, and it was, you know, in uh, resistance to this, uh, to my own creature, makes me think that this might be some kind of mirror type situation. Second sword, so I could just go ahead and kill this. I mean, are they really going to crossbow my stuff? Yeah, I think I do rapid shot just to cycle for more interesting things. And then there's a tree minder. And I think in this case, I don't mind them getting a rally. Uh, being able to get value from my tree minder seems pretty good. So we're going to do that. Since it, it seems to me that my opponent is not on anything particularly aggressive. And I think they might be on Doomcrag. Okay. <clears throat> well, this is definitely interesting. Um, pretty sure I want Cicero. Definitely imagine a world where I... Cicero sword something next turn. Draw myself four cards. Yeah, this is this is interesting. Um, be interesting to see how this match goes exactly. My inclination is that we want a turbo ramp and then do some breakthrough, unstoppable rage and squish uh, action. There's Galen. That card. Now, isn't that card a Nord Firebrand? <clears throat> if I'm not mistaken. So, do I just draw four cards? It leaves this on the board. Alternatively, I swing, swing, Skaven and wait for something bigger. No, this seems fine. Seems fine. Uh, you know, turning these cards into other cards is, of course, really powerful. 
Um, a lot of stuff here. I am going to go ahead and keep swinging. Um, <clears throat> I feel like giving my opponent additional resources is not necessarily super relevant in this matchup, given uh, what I have going on here. Although I don't have, notably, uh, ways to trigger um, all of my removal. Like, I have no lethal creature in hand. Although I could bring something back this turn. The Nord Firebrands say Doomcrag to me. So I'm pretty sure that's what my opponent's on. That should be interesting. And so far this version of the deck feels... You know, very similar to the one I was running. Okay. Well... I just double Skaven swing in. keep my opponent from ramping <clears throat> nothing that we want to bring back is a little unfortunate which is also why I kind of think chipping away at my opponent is fine Let's see if they have a cradle crush it's a difference that uh, I mean we're not running cradle crush it seems like a my opponent may be barrow stalker rally ignore firebrand Just a tree miner. Huh? All right, well, let's take it slow. Unless I want to bring back Cicero. Is that something I'm into? And I have crossbows, and actually, you know what? I am into bringing back Cicero. Let's see what happens here. I mean. They are set up here for a great Doomcrag turn. I'm not sure how consistent Doomcrag is in a three color deck, but I feel like this gives us some options. And I'm really trying to leverage what I have with where I'm at, right? And it could just be that. Um, I need to cycle through my deck faster to get better stuff. To some extent, having the Tree Miner Edict, huh? Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so I do get a Skaven that away. Unless I want to bring it back. I think Skavening is fine, just getting that value. interesting we're both doing nothing I do still have necromancers to bring back Cicero I was just kind of trying to make something happen which can be a mistake Emperor's Blade Squish don't really want to do that I could Falkreath Sword Cicero Falkreath, crossbow. Sword Cicero. Yeah. I'm down with that. Deal from folks who ain't using it. That's the key. Again, just looking for stuff. Get ahead of my opponent. Resources here: squishes, rapid shots, old Velothi's sword. And I am just gonna keep pressuring my opponent here. I'll even play the old Velothi. This actually worked out pretty well. I mean, it's it's possible that we could just win against you know a couple tree miners or something like that in the back of sword and and uh, squishes on the night shadow. Looks like they've got. Skaven or setting up for a potential Skaven. Yeah, we just want them to play a couple creatures. 
like Tiny Dragon. Adorable. Okay, reading party. So six thirteen eight. So we don't have lethal. I can squish back something again. Yeah, the most we can do this turn is eight from a breakthrough on sorted. Swing on the tiny dragon, 12, 14, so we can't kill our opponent. But I do want to keep this alive. And then I want to push as much damage as possible. And I'm going to rapid shot this. Arrow stalker. Really, if they play much of anything, we'll win. Uh, do I play pure blood elder to kind of force him to do stuff? Yeah, I think I do. I mean, we clearly have initiative. All this chipping away on their life total has played into the strategy of multiple squish on our breakthrough creature. I don't think they have a way to kill their tiny dragon. <clears throat> so, I think we're in a pretty good position here. They set up for a Doomcrag in this lane. If they play a Doomcrag, we have enough damage to kill them because we'll be able to push through a bunch of damage on it. If they Unstoppable Rage, we have enough damage to kill them. Yeah. Right? Javelin would ruin our day. There we go. Squish the Wimpy Lethal. We will be right back for more Meta Mondays. Alright, Meta Monday continues. <clears throat> now, this list, one card off of this specific list that we're running now, um, I need to to number one legend. Uh, Thule Deer brought it to a warp meta uh, uh, tournament. Warp meta 49, changing one card. We kept that change. And like I said, it's uh, four or five cards off of the version that I put together. We're playing against Scout, huh? <clears throat> I'm going to... Hmm. I don't think I want Sword. I kind of like Skaven... I don't really like Skaven either. I'm going to throw all this back. I'm going to assume it's Slay Scout. And Slay Scout with the ring could be a lot of pressure for us. Our hand... You know, it could be that it got worse, but... There's just a couple of cards that... Um, I'm really looking for. And those are Tree Minders. Really, is it? So I think like hard mulliganing for those could be correct. You know, Barrow Stalker if it's Slay Scout. Tree Minder if it's either kind of scout. No Indoral Mastermind. Well, wouldn't mind the Skaven now. But they throw a Brotherhood Slayer away, which... Oh, well. There you go. <laughs> you play Tier 1 decks, you get Tier 1 top decks. <clears throat> So we got nothing to uh, Odinir and Necromancer back. We don't have any interaction, really. Uh, but we do have Rapid Shot, which, you know, is technically interaction. You know, we could, uh, if we felt it necessary, kill a Brotherhood Slayer next turn, for instance. Just give me a name. I mean, we could if they played it in this lane. <laughs> I will Rapid Shot it. Uh, and I will play a Dragon Tail Savior. A one of copy of Dragon Tail Savior is in the deck, and I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, the changes were, you know, like the one of Dragon Tail Savior, um, more Pyromancers than I was running. Um, one Shadow Fin Priest, which I wasn't running. One less Unstoppable Rage. Um, 
and then there was one one of the early two drop guards or something like that that I was running was taken out uh, slightly different numbers of sword squishes and crossbows all right so it is slice scout <clears throat> Well, what do we got here? We have Old Velothi Sword, if that's the sort of thing we want to do. I have Shadow Fem Priest. We kind of just need to stop them. My hand is not great. I have a couple Odinarians for value, but I'm a little afraid of giving them contracts. I am concerned in the future about having ways to kill... Seven Fives, for instance. I'm going to Shadow Fin Priest, Astrid, swing into this, swing into this. Um, if they have a Squish the Wimpy and the best they can do is generate some more Tongue Aspirants, I think that's fine because I can Odinair and Necromancer back Skaven Pyromancer. I didn't want them to have contracts, but I wanted to go ahead and tr trade so that I could establish this guy in this lane. And uh, also so I could get my Skaven dead so I could bring it back with Necromancer. I mean, right now it may just be that playing for the board is a fine strategy. Otherwise, I'm not doing a whole lot with what I have right now, so it seems okay. And I'm sure they're running things like Shadow Shift and Mad Dash. And while Mad Dash last turn would have been a kind of a disaster for us, and I should have thought about that, what is uh, good for us now is getting rid of this before they're able to lane change it. And if they play another friend over there, like that's great for us, right? Uh, yeah. So I think this pretty well plays around whatever they're trying to set up. I bring back the Skaven, I kill that, and I swing into this. <clears throat> no point in getting greedy here. Uh, if they have, you know, slay value uh, that they can get with the Indro Mastermind somehow. Okay. I just. If I can minimize the damage I'm taking, I'm going to go ahead and do that against a deck like this. And I still have Sword Ald Velothi for an emergency removal of some giant fantastic threat. I do like running the full set of Skavens. Um, that has felt great in this game. Uh, in particular, having one on curve was awesome. And in the last game as well, Skaven just felt good. There's a chain of a burger chain here in Colorado <clears throat> called Good Times, and uh, got myself a Diet Pepsi from them. So I don't actually have anything I want to play next turn. Except I really want to kill that. Actually, squish the wimpy. What are they bringing back? Please bring back something I can kill. Yeah, okay. So again, we're just getting crazy value from our uh, Skaven, which seems fine. It seems like we win the late game 100% of the time. And now we can start dropping down things like Vigilant Giant, which seemed pretty good. They will get a contract. I wonder if they have Hulking Scalen. I don't think we can kill Hulking Scalen. It's got three contracts and they have a ring charge. Like, they could play Hulking Scalen right now. We would have to oppose it with the Vigilant Giant. There's the Torval Extortionist. That we can kill like this. Uh, there's a Crossbow, which I like much more than Sword in this situation. I should have played the Necromancer. I'm sorry, the Mastermind first. That was my mistake. <clears throat> I like Venom Tongue here. Gives me another way to kill something. Oh, 
Oh, Hulking Scalen, where are you? You know, Hulking Scalen Swift Strike is a way we could die pretty quickly. I wonder if it's reason enough actually to just start swinging. I mean, it might not even be in their deck, but it's the kind of card that's potentially super good against us, and I really like in Slay Scout. I am going to start pressuring them. Play the Vigilant Giant. And there's the Unstoppable Rage. We rallied on Iron Age Rock because sometimes 12 12 is not good enough. Okay. Squish the Wimpies for everybody. Next thing you know, Squish the Wimpy is going to be an aggro sorcerer. It's going to be great. <laughs> I'm thinking about it now. <laughs> I, should, I should really... I mean, like, Ramp Sorcerer is, like, one of my... Like, actually, just weird sorcerer decks in general. It's one of my favorite decks. And, uh... I should probably jam Squish the Wimpy and something like that. Okay. Lucian something squish. I assume my Vigilant Giant is not long for this world. But Sword Venom Tongue on Lucian. Wait, what? Oh, they have a handful of contracts. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be a, a huge squish. Sure. I mean, fortunately, I can remove it. But they are going to gain substantial life. They have another squish. Just on going. Okay. Yeah, it's a 12 10 now. I mean, that's great. That's why I'm super excited to have the kind of cards I have in my hand right now. <laughs> so we, we actually kind of want to do this before we rally, I guess, just to maximize our value. I don't know how much it matters. Just because we don't, we don't need that thing buffed up ever. But uh, as it stands, I think keeping the sword is fine. And we can play Iron Atrox next turn. I don't care that much about them having a Lucian, and that's what I would remove anyway. So we're not out of the woods, though. I mean, like we're kind of out of the woods. Like we can see the end of the woods. <laughs> Want to place Night Mother? The kind of card which is horrifying, you know, in the early games sometimes, but not necessarily super relevant. 7-7 seven, seven Unglum, though. Guy's been working out. I can respect that. Clockwork Scorpion. Cool. So we'll skip the last turn. And uh, proceed to Victoryville. Alright, we'll be right back for more Meta Mondays with Rage Warrior. Alright, Rage Warrior Meta Mondays. The Aini Thuldir list is what we're rocking right now. Going pretty well. Uh, you know, Meta Mondays always go pretty well for me. Um, because they're strong, consistent decks. This one has the benefit of being, um, I think, also super interesting. Although, you know, obviously carried by a couple really pushed cards. Um, it's definitely not your traditional meta deck. So now we're playing against Telvanni. Now, it seems to me, just in theory, that Telvanni is going to be Conscription, and we can beat it by Unstoppable Raging, some gigantic creature. I'm going to keep Venom Tongue so we can make sure that we can rage at the right time, and I'm going to keep Camel because I think we're going to have time to play things like Camel and dig for the cards that we need in order to win. Because there's only two Unstoppable Rages in the deck at this point. Um, yeah. So let's do it. Ubigor. Greetings, Greetings, yes. We have Old Bloth the Assassin. Not optimistic that it survives. Uh, simply because we're going into their third turn when they could have Black Hand Messenger. You know, in, in, the incidental damage 
over the course of the game. This is always relevant. Drain vitality. Whoa. Luzra. I'm gonna ring out Archie and Venom Tone. I could just sort it. There's no way they trigger this next turn. I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Just because if it works, it's there's so much upside. I have redundant venom tongue access. Sure, negation here. Now this requires a creature that costs six or more, so I still have a turn. Uh, before I have to venom tongue sword. I'm gonna take the crossbow. <clears throat> yeah, this seems fine. Word wall. All the venom tongues. Well, all the venom tongues say to me that this is fine. You know, next turn I have crossbow on venom tongue. And we just, at this point, are just ramping, right? And I don't want Luzra getting out of control, getting value. Let's see if they necromancer it back. I mean, that's a thing that could happen. They have a shout. I mean, like, they could just drain vitality. It's an altar deck. Okay. So it might not even be a uh, conscription deck, although I kind of assume it is. <laughs> but, but it doesn't have to be. Okay. Another word wall. Um, I have time, so I'm going to play Merchant's Camel. I want... Night Shadow for Unstoppable Rage Reasons? Just swing into this. It's gonna get uh, altered. <clears throat> Not grabbing the Necromancer could be wrong if this turns into sort of a grindy attrition type game, but... So they, they might have a level 3... Several level 3 shouts. They went for the two before they went for the one. I'm just praying they just don't have a shout in hand. <laughs> There's the rage. But we still have stone. Nothing to do. Do I ever just venom tongue crossbow here? It's not crazy. But I think it's probably unnecessary. Play the gatekeeper. Maybe this is the kind of match where uh, getting that sweet, sweet value from uh, Necromancer was just the right move. I am just going to start smashing face. That's why I played it over here. I like this. This might not be conscription. This could just be cool. <laughs> I like seeing the Zavara Atronarch. It's 5-5. Five, five. It's a big boy. Um, black hand. Sure. Do I just machine gun crossbows on these things? On the other hand, it might mean we're not actually that close to winning. Mm -hmm. We have a Night Shadow in hand, and we have an Unstoppable Rage in hand, but those aren't, like, awesome. I mean, I could ramp for two. Or I could just do nothing and uh, double crossbow next turn. I think that's fine. I don't think taking five here is, like, the worst thing that could happen to us. <clears throat> I guess we'll take seven, probably. This is grabbing a three, this is grabbing a four, so we'll have better targets anyway. Okay. And a lightning bolt or an Ancano or something. No? Sure. There's a Necromancer. Does that mean anything? Sure. Viper in that lane doesn't mean anything. So I think an next turn I'm going to Venom Tongue Crossbow Sword. Not green, that's amazing. They're back up to 31. 
All right, so let's kill this stuff. So that our unstoppable rage here can be awesome. What if I just use all of these? Just go ramp nuts. I think that's fine. I mean, it puts us into a position to next turn unstoppable rage on our night shadow. The, my problem, though, is that it's only six power, right? <clears throat> can necromancer back stuff? I mean, I can even Necromancer Unstoppable Rage. There's Galen. How many cards deep are we? 20, uh, I'm sorry, 19 cards deep? Burn Clan Nightstalker. I like to see that. I'm a big fan of that card. Sure, Viper. You just go face with it, right? And then alter it? No, you use it. Okay. Sure. Um. Well, now... Now we're in the realm of, of winning. Um. Except I can't necromancer back ramp. I'm going to ramp naturally twice over the next two turns, but I also don't want to die. I'm going to bring back Enderal Mastermind. No, Camel. Camel, obviously. I mean, what if I just play Night Talon Lord? Although next turn I'll have enough Magicka to Unstoppable Rage on it. <laughs> Which is of course awesome. I, I have a lot of options next turn. I went with the Night Talon Lord because I'm going to 17 Magicka, which is the Dream Unstoppable Rage Night Talon Lord. We only have two Unstoppable Rages, but a good enough Unstoppable Rage wins the game. Um, I really want them to play more creatures so that my Unstoppable Rage is badass, but I stacked my own creatures in the same lane as the Shadowfin Priest, so that if I have to, I Unstoppable Rage on this lane, I get back the Shadowfin Priest, and I can destroy one of their altars. They might just Ice Storm, too. Ice Storm would actually be great for them. Oh man, a Necromancer, too. This is beautiful. Sometimes you don't have to deal lethal damage to win. <laughs> Alright, let's see what happens here. Yeah. Oh my... Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, let's make sure we're not missing lethal. Oh my god, Squish too. We put him to 21. We deal. We Squish, and then we Unstoppable Rage on this. So we could deal... 9... 10... Yeah, we don't have lethal. Okay, well... Yeah, this is going to be, this should be absolutely astounding, depending on how Luzro works here. Oh, yes. <laughs> God. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay, so I'm choosing a card for Camel. I think I want Dark Seducer. No, Vigilant Giant for Squish the Limpy. Uh, 
these all trigger in just crazy ways. I'm gonna silence the one on seven. Seems fine. Um, I can bring back, I can't bring back the gatekeeper. Uh, what do I want here? Galen? Shuffling in Vigilant Giants. Wrong place for a midnight then I'm going to swing into this. Okay, that was a crazy turn. Turns out Luzra in Rage Warrior is pretty good. Blood Magic Lord. We're planning on swinging for lethal. We have squish stuff going on. Sure. Sure. Okay, we don't have lethal. <clears throat> or do we? Um, vigilant. Oh, wait. We have Squish on Pure Blood Elder. <laughs> Which is. Okay. Well, it's still going to be a ton of damage because this comes down as a 16 16 Squish on this or this is 13 damage so we do have lethal sure okay well let's just swing and more squish lethal because this card is crazy oh shit Take out cereal. Alright. Uh, we'll be right back for another Meta Mondays game. <laughs> oh God, Squish just... I mean, this deck, this deck I think was good before Squish the Wimpy was added to the card pool. Alright, Squish the Wimpy. Winning us games here, Meta Mondays, Rage Warrior. Um, this is the fourth episode of Meta Mondays. You know, his, we have so show, so far done uh, Agro Warrior, Agro Sorcerer, Control Tribunal, and now Control Warrior. Although it has a, it plays a lot. I mean, more like a combo deck than Control Tribunal does, but it's a control deck. Now we're playing against Nor Ten Seventy on Crusader. I don't really want sword here, but maybe I do. Actually, yeah, I'm going to keep sword. I have Indro Mastermind to find something to do with it. The question now is, like, do I ring this out ever? Let's say no. I mean, actually, there are times where I would. I would ring it out in uh, opposition to some tokens, for instance. No play on turns one and two. So is it a uh, Heretic Conjurer? Because that deck I don't think we beat. <laughs> I just don't think we beat that deck at all. Alright, another all Veloth Assassin's fine. I'm going to swing before I rally. Although, you know, I don't really want to rally under this either since my plan right now involves some sort of Sword of the Inferno Sacrifice. Ulfric's House Carl. That I think I have to kill. Probably. Although, you know what? I could just play Archie and Venom Tongue. And be pretty happy with myself. You know, right now it, tr it trades with a... Uh, Okay, well, that's a lot of card draw. I can kill both of those creatures. Or I could just Skaven and swing into that. Keep it alive. Keeping it alive seems good. Alright, we, now we are down to 20 already. 
which is relevant. We know they have charged creatures. They have Rotwood and Ambusher. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's play this. And grab Gatekeeper. Actually, let's grab Shadowfin Priest. We have ways to kill things. So... Let's just remove this. I assume they're not playing anything else in the field lane. We have Rage. <clears throat> we don't have any Rage creatures yet. Trouble Seeker. Into Prophecy. Where's those Skavens? Dishnikyal Archer. And we can kill both these creatures. Yeah, I'll play I'll swing, despite the fact that this isn't their deck. Play the Enderal. Do I want pure blood elder? I have swords and crossbows plenty, so I guess I do. I'm gonna ping this, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna rapid shot that. Do I swing? We've seen Grotwood ambusher, <laughs> and I can't currently deal with anything, so no. We're looking for uh, either of our any of our drain creatures. Sure, Trouble Seeker. Uh, okay. I'm gonna get in Trouble Seeker value. There's Cladris Illusionist. Well, Necromancer is pretty crazy good here. I just want more ramp. I want to kill him like this. Maybe that's too ambitious, but um, I can see us doing it. Sure. I mean, we have a lot of damage. We do have to be considerate of their prophecies. You know, like, I do feel more tension in this game than I have in uh, perhaps any of the other ones we've played so far. Let's say that we get a survive and swing that we can get 13 on board. So we don't have any lethal. So I need to poke and control for one more turn. Or perhaps not. Or their prophecies. Get in there. Does Necromancer change anything? Wow, somebody just started following my Twitch channel. I'm not streaming right now. But that happens from time to time because of the way I have it set up. Okay. If I swing face with both of these, and then Venom Tongue Unstoppable Rage. Let's make sure we're not missing lethal here. We have seven. Oh wait, we, we, we do have lethal. Wait, do we? Yes. <laughs> because of the afflicted elite. Okay. Well, cool. <laughs> I put way more effort into that than I needed to. <laughs> Alright, guys. Meta Mondays. This has been Rage Warrior. A very powerful deck, to be sure. Uh, we got from... Not sure which games I'm including in this video, but we got from the Serpent in Rank 2, which is where I hang out because of the things I play on stream, uh, to Rank 1. Very easily. So, there you go.